In one year, we saw as much silver taken off of the exchange as we saw in the 10 years preceding. Uh, we saw as much gold taken off of the exchange as the Bank of Japan holds. And we are heading to a, a place that is going to um, change the way of life that people in this country um, are used to anyway. It's going to be a different existence if things play out the way that I think. Since the end of World War II, there's been one tier one reserve, and that's been U.S. dollars and U.S. treasuries. And a tier one reserve is a riskless asset, according to the central banks. And out of nowhere, the BIS, the Bank of International Settlements, which is the central bank or central bank, decided to reclassify gold as the world's only other tier one asset. Let me just say that slowly. The world's only other tier one reserve asset. Now let's take a look at the three years leading up to that. Does it make sense that the Bundesbank made a big deal about repatriating it, its gold? Does it make sense that Germany, Austria, Hungary, Poland, Czechoslovakia, and many other of the Eastern European central banks repatriated their gold and started going on a gold buying spree two and a half years before the BIS announces that it will be reclassified as a tier one? Or does it seem more probable that the BIS quietly to their members of uh, banks laid out a framework of what was coming and said, you all need to get your house in order. Uh, you need to start to accumulate gold and repatriate that in which is outside the borders because gold is going to have a central theme in what comes next. I would choose the latter. So in 2020, we get to a point where the banks again are, are massively accumulating gold, but we can begin to see some other things that make me pause and wonder, you know, something bigger is going on here. As an example, we see the International Monetary Fund, almost 200 countries from around the world that was formulated at the Bretton Woods Convention at the end of World War II. At the end of World War II, the Allies met in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, and anointed the dollar the world reserve currency, taking over for the pound sterling, and um, did a lot of things like peg gold to the dollar at a fixed rate of $35 an ounce. Classified dollars and treasuries as a tier one reserve asset formulated the International Monetary Fund. The IMF was formulated at Bretton Woods. So here we are, you know, 60 years or 80 years later rather, and they're saying all these countries from around the world say, we want a new Bretton Woods, a new system. They publicly say on their website. Now things are really getting interesting. Now you've got the IMF saying we want a new system. We see a rise of a group of reportables on the Commitment of Traders report, which let me back up and explain what that is. The COMEX market is the commodity exchange here in the States that sets the worldwide price for commodities. And um, the, the exchange publishes something every week called the Commitment of Traders. It's a report that shows the positioning of the largest traders on the exchange, only the largest. And typically it was two brackets. You have the commercial banks and the hedge funds. They call them the specs. The specs would be uh, big funds, um, money managers that are trading large allocations of gold and silver contracts. For investment, the commercials largely are the banks. Now, the commercials have a, a wider designation. Uh, even a company like myself who hedges gold for legitimate purposes would be considered a commercial. But for the, this discussion, the commercials are JP, Goldman City, Bank of America, those types of players. And the positioning of those largest traders would be on the COT report, COT, Commitment of Traders. And for all my career, every week it was just the hedge funds or the specs and the commercials. Out of nowhere in 2020, we see the rise of a third group of reportables and they are called the others. And they are believed to be sovereign wealth funds and family offices. We can call them the most well-funded, well-informed, influential private traders on the planet. And they start draining the COMEX market in 2020 to a degree that no one's ever seen before. An exchange that was never established to be a delivery mechanism, all of a sudden Pandora's box was open. And we see in the year 2020, this group, the others, the most well-funded and well-informed private traders on the planet. Now, three years previous, you see all sorts of goings-ons with the central banks and their clandestine accumulation and repatriation of gold. 
Now out of nowhere, there's just a coincidence that the others pop up on Colmex and start to drain the exchange. I would su submit that these people either are the central banks wearing a different hat or are very close to the information. And in one year, we saw as much silver taken off of the exchange as we saw in the 10 years preceding. Uh, we saw as much gold taken off of the exchange as the Bank of Japan holds in their official holdings. This is a trend that we have seen to this day, which we will get to later on. But in 2020, you see the IMF say we want a new Bretton Woods. The central banks are still massively accumulating gold. And now you get these private traders off of Colmex that come up out of nowhere that for all the years I've been reading the COT report every week was just the commercials and the specs. Now there's the others. And the others are taking possession, which is something we never have seen before. A central bank digital currency is coming, and I surmise it would be pegged to gold because it's the only other tier one reserve asset in the world. And why the hell are all the central banks gobbling it up and repatriating it, preceding the announcement of its reclassification? And why are these others draining the COMEX? And why is the IMF asking for a new system? Do you see these pieces are starting to come together? I had no idea where we would go from there, that it would actually lead to where we are now. But we'll get there. Now, mile marker number two started a little earlier than 2020, but by 2020, it's really taking shape. The Chinese Belt Road and Rail Initiative. Now, when I was talking about this in 2020, no one knew what it was. But it is probably something that everyone should understand uh, vehemently what it is. And it is the most ambitious infrastructure project ever attempted in human history. And it is connecting kind of the old Silk Road, uh, Asia uh, and Africa, uh, parts of uh, Europe and South America. And it is China's ambition to connect all of these countries and build an infrastructure. Uh, on the Belt Road Initiative, you have, as an example, all 13 OPEC producing countries. It's approaching 70% of global human population. 45% of global GDP before industrialization. This is no small deal. It is not just connecting these countries with bridges and roads and railways and maritime channels, but it's also connecting them digitally. So I start saying, look, the need for silver in this infrastructure project is enormous. You are connecting 70% of human population digitally as well in a digital and green environment. Silver started taking a very significant uh, role. Anyway, so in 2020, we have the rise of the others. We have the IMF asking for a new system. We have the Belt Road Initiative. We have the banks accumulating and repatriating gold. You can see things are starting to really take shape. 2021 rolls around and we see massive gold acquisition by Russia, by Turkey, by India, by Poland, by China, by Kazakhstan, by Hungary, by Thailand, by Japan, by Brazil. They're all gobbling up gold. So in 2022, when you are the steward of the world reserve currency, it is not your job to tell who can and who cannot use it. And by weaponizing it, it has incentivized the majority of the world to move away from the US dollar, to find an a alternative source of clearing um, and not using the SWIFT system because countries like China, who have sold treasuries for the past eight months in a row, 150 billion in treasuries, they're not buying them anymore. Japan's not buying them. Saudi Arabia's not buying them. Russia's not buying them. All of these countries are selling treasuries. Why? Because they're thinking, hmm, are we next? 